can relate to that, just where your day just turns to mud, and then mud turns to anything that's worse than mud. I don't know what's worse than mud. But it, the day gets worse, and it gets worse, and it gets worse. And we all go through these times of trials in our lives, tribulations, all kinds of problems come our way. And we do ask that question sometimes, God, why did these things happen to me? Do you really like me? Don't we ask that question? And now on the other side, when things are going good, then we think that God, we're in his favor and he really likes us and he likes us better. But I want to encourage you today that how God feels about you never changes. Did you hear what I'm just saying? Whether you have a good day or a bad day, that is no indication of how God feels about you. Did you hear what I just said? You see, that's why Jesus went to the cross. Scripture says he demonstrated, everyone say demonstrated, demonstrated his love that while we were yet sinners, he died for us, the ungodly. That demonstration of love supersedes any situation that you or I go through that makes us think that God is either happy with us or unhappy with us, either favors us or favors someone else. We've got to get it out of our mind that God favors some people more than others. There is no truth in that. If you are in Christ Jesus, Scripture says that you are a new creation. Amen? All things have passed away. All things become new. Now listen to this. All things are of God. Can we see it that way in our lives? Whether good or bad, that Jesus Christ is still in control. In fact, Jesus told us, and we have to remember that each and every time in this world, you will have what? Tribulations. But be of good cheer. Well, I got the first half. The second half is a little difficult. You see, the first half, I don't have to do anything about. The second half will drive me wacky. You know what I'm saying? See, the first half is Wiley Coyote. How many people know that? In fact, you know, what I really relate to is where it literally defies the laws of nature. I'm going to saw that hole in the bridge, and in my case, the bridge falls. Amen? <laughs> it ever happened to you? It just it seems like if it, it, it add insult to injury, you know, Murphy's Law, whatever you want to call it, hear me, it happens to all. Amen? But I want to encourage you today that when things are not going well, God doesn't hate you. God is not trying to hurt you. I want to, and the opposite, I believe God's trying to grow you. He's trying to grow me. Amen? We all go through difficult times. And we ask this question, why do things happen to me? We're going to see today from the book of James. If you turn to James chapter 1, we're going to be starting at verse 2 this morning. And I want to start with this first verse. It says this, my brethren... Count it all joy. Everyone say joy. Oh, joy. When you fall into various trials. Now, these are difficult words. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And Caesar, if you can hit the format button on the, um, I think it just has to reformat the, uh, the screen. When you fall into various trials, rejoice. Be joyful. Now, how many people say, James, you're crazy. James, you're out of your mind. Things are going wrong, and I'm supposed to have joy? I'm supposed to rejoice? James, this does not make any sense to me whatsoever. As human beings, it almost seems may even seem like it's denial in our way. But it's not denial. James is helping us to reach to something even greater, and we're going to see it. And the first thing we're going to see is that when trials come our way, we need to put our mission over our emotions. Write that down. We need to put our mission over our emotions. Is that the truth? The word there for counted all joy, or some of your Bibles may say considerable joy, is the word, I hope I say it right, again, oh my. Everyone say, again, oh my. Again, oh my. Right? Yeah. And you know what that word literally means? It means a general leading an army. Now get this. Lead the army. What is he talking about? Understand, we need to lead our thoughts, our minds. Anyone here, I, I, you know, I, I, you guys know, I just got through rotator cuff surgery. Watch this. Ready? Watch this. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. You know something? That just hurt like the dickens. And it's going to hurt like the dickens. And you know what the doctor said to me? It's going to hurt. And they go, they go to Kessler, and they stretch it, and they stretch it. And I go, oh, oh. And I really hate the 
fact that I know everyone at Kessler, they're my friends because they come over here to our senior lunches because I don't want them to see me cry. And what happens is as he lifts it, I go, oh, it hurts. And he goes, Matt, I got to stretch it. Matt, I got to stretch it. You got to understand it's not going to get better if I don't stretch it. You need a little pain in this thing. You know, it's funny because a lot of times I'm like, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> do what you got to do today. Let's do the stretching. Let's go ahead. Go ahead. Like, no, stop, 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 stop. No, okay, then he stops. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Stop, 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 stop. Do you want me to do it or do you not want me to do it? Isn't that what happens with pain in our lives? Pain tends to do that in our lives. Pain tends to make us change our mind very quickly because none of us want to be uncomfortable. Hear me. It's our human nature to want to run when there's pain. It's our human nature to question if everything's okay when there's pain. It's even built into us instinctively. But hear me. This is why we must lead our own minds to truth. We must lead our minds to joy. You see, joy is very, something that's it's, it's so important for us to understand what it is. It starts, first starts with Jesus Christ that he is our example of joy. Look what the scripture says. Looking onto Jesus, that means if you're, you're lacking in joy and you're going through trials, look to Jesus. Amen? Look to Jesus. He's our example. The author and the finisher of our faith. Now, if he wrote it and he finished it, what else is there to do with our faith? Nothing. Trust him. Amen? He says this, for, who, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despised the shame. Sounds like he was having a good time on that cross, wasn't it? Now look at this. And has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. On that cross, Jesus endured pain. On that cross, he despised what he had to do, but he found joy in what he did do because of his mission for you and for me. Sometimes hard work pays off. Amen? Sometimes we can upset this hard work, we don't see the beat off early, we start to lose heart. Understand that if you're working for the kingdom, nothing is a waste when it comes to Jesus Christ. How many people know that? You see, Jesus is our example. He's our example of joy in our mission. To ignore the emotion when, when things start getting rough and say, no, this is what my mission is. And you know something? Use those emotions to bring you to the throne room of grace. How many people remember the, the Hannah? When she can't have a child. And she goes into the temple. She begins to pray. And it says that she's so grieved that her lips move, but no words can come out of her mouth. Remember that? You see, those emotions of grief, she used them to come to God with. Not to complain to others. Not to think of one liar to put on Facebook for a rotten day. To complain about her boss. But she used it to come to God. God gave us even negative emotions to inspire us to come to him with passion. Boy, if I can come to God with half the love passion when I'm angry as I do the people around me who just got me annoyed. Amen? You know, I want you to know the one thing that Jesus said, this is so wonderful. He said this to Paul. Paul understood this. Paul was going through this horrible trial of life and he had what he called a thorn in the flesh. We're not exactly sure what it was. Most people think it was his mother-in-law. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But the most important thing is this. After he prayed three seasons for God to change things, God said this, my grace is sufficient. Think about that. Now, how many people would say, God, your grace is sufficient is like getting underwear on Christmas. I know I need it, but I was really looking forward to something else. Amen? You see, look what he goes on to say here. For my power is perfected in weakness. You see, when trials come our way, one reason that we need to have joy, one is that we have a mission that we're completing for Jesus Christ. We don't want to forget that mission. And also, God is going to complete it through His power when we go through trials that He sends. How many people know that? You know, things go wrong sometimes. A few things went wrong this morning, and we start to get a little tense, and then we look at each other and we say, it's going to be a good day. God's going to do some great things here. Amen? How about when things start getting tense in your life? Do you say it's going to be a bad day or do you say it's going to be a good day because God can work in my weakness? Amen? You know, also John 16, 20, Jesus said this. He says, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. Jesus promises that. He will turn your sorrow and my sorrow into joy if we will wait patiently. Amen? So therefore, lead your mind and rejoice. Why? Because Jesus said it will be turned into joy. So you know something? We rejoice in advance, don't we? 
You see, joy many times we see it as an experience that God has to hit us with. Joy sometimes is a decision that we need to make and walk in ourselves. Did you hear what I said? Now, there are times, don't take me wrong, where God will, will slam us with unspeakable joy. How many people have ever had that happen? I've had it happen in my life. But in many cases, if I'm waiting for that joy, I'll be waiting at the bus stop for quite a long time for a bus that's not going to come. You know why? Because God wants faith in my life. And when I decide to rejoice in difficult times, I am exercising my faith. Amen? We need to pursue joy. We need to lead our minds to joy. I love what Paul says in Philippians. He says, I rejoice and share my joy with all of you. Now he says what this joy is. Whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted loss for the sake of Christ. See, Paul's joy was the fact that in his trials, he had less affection for this world. He found God's grace in those trials, and he had greater affection for Jesus. And that became a source of joy for him. How many people say, you know, those wonder years were long gone in my life? I ever once while I still meet someone who, maybe in their 40s or 50s, my older brother Don, he, he never got out of the wonder of life. And I, I envy that so very much, because he sees things with such wonder, even at 50. One years old, and I think that is so cool. Went out the window a long time ago for me. <laughs> but I'll tell you something. Sometimes the wonder of life has to get knocked. It is a beautiful world. Louis Armstrong was right. But how many people know it's a sinful world that's passing away? And God says, don't get to You see, not only do we need to put our mission above emotion when trials come our ways, but the next thing we're going to see is that there's a purpose to it. So stop pouting. Do you pout like me? <laughs> My mommy says, go, go ahead, go stew in your own juices. Okay, I will. There's something, there's something sickingly uh, uh, refreshing about stewing in your own juices, isn't there? Right? Pity party, right? There's something about having a pity party that, that feels sickeningly good to us. And we've got to be careful that we don't entertain those feelings. Amen? Look what uh, verse 3 says here. Knowing, everyone say knowing, that the testing of your faith produces patience. The word there for know is, 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 is a knowledge that comes from experience. It's observed through life. You see, early on we trusted because Jesus said it. But you see, as time goes by, what we have to do is remember the things that Christ has done for us and say, how dare I not trust him now when he's brought me through all of this. Amen? You see, this is why Joseph could say to his brothers after they sold him into slavery and all the ups and downs of his life, he says, but as for you, you meant evil against me. But listen to Joseph, but God meant it, say it with me, for good. Look at this, there's a purpose in order to bring about, as this is it, that's all folks, no wonder we're watching Looney Tunes this morning, amen, as it is this day to save many. You see, Joseph, throughout his life, knew he had a purpose from the very beginning. God gave him a dream when he was a young man. How many people know, through the ups and downs, he had to hold on to that dream? God has given promises of redemption to you and me. We need to hold on to those promises. Yet from pit to palace to prison to pinnacle, Joseph saw God's faithfulness. And looking back over his life, when he had the ability to, to retaliate against his brothers, he said, no, and looking back, God has been faithful. God had a purpose. If this hadn't happened, we would have never saved God's people. So what's the trial you may be going through that you don't see a purpose in? Yet God has promised to redeem you. Maybe there are people who want to be saved. You say, these people on the job, what jerks they are. Absolutely, and they need Jesus Christ. So when are you going to get started? You see, we pout instead of finding our purpose. We spend time pouting. Do you pout as much as I do? I, look, I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself today, amen? I am the king of pout. Watch me hold my breath. Right? I am the king of pout. But listen to what uh, David says in the Psalms. You know how David's life was trial, tried as, as, as Saul chased him for 12 to 13 years of his life. Think about that. He was told he'd be king, and now he's chased as a renegade for 12 to 13 years. How many people after 13 years would have given up on being king? Come on. How many people after 13 days would have given up on being king? 
Amen? But listen to what David says looking back. I waited, what's that word say? Patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me and he heard my cry. God hears your cry. Amen? If it's a cry in faith. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction. God promises to take us out of destruction, save us from destruction, out of the miry clay to get us out of this area where we're stuck. And he says this, he set my feet upon a rock onto firm foundation. That's what God wants to do in your life if you'll wait patiently. How many people say, I, li I don't like those two words, wait and patient, unless you're a doctor, patience are not a word that I really want to hear. Amen? There's no, no, no doubt about it. But you know, not only do we see this, that this is an experience that, that as we see God's faithfulness through life, we have to remind ourselves of the good things that God has done and remind ourselves that no matter how long we wait, God will come through in this situation. That when we look back, we can say, yes, he has delivered me. Understand also, God will never test you further than you can handle. How many people know that? Now, you got to hear this. This is important. And you got to see it up on the screen right now. No temptation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. Nobody knows the troubles I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. I'm sure Jesus wants to do this. Ah, oh. hmm. <laughs> we all have troubles. F forgive me. Get over it. We think my troubles are worse than your troubles. And you think your troubles are worse than my trouble. And we get into our trouble scar contest, don't we? Look at my scar. Right? You don't know nothing. I said this a long time ago. I haven't said it in years, but I want to say it to you now. When you tell people that they don't know what you're going through, you're telling them hands off, don't help me. You're telling them that there's nothing they can do to help you. I share this illustration. I want to share it again. It's been a long time. But I remember when my children were very young, and my daughter, Deanna, was just a couple years old, and I was going through some real heavy-duty troubles while I was principaling the school in Livingston. There was a, a controversy that was going on that I found was trying me greatly. Now, some people say, well, unless you've been through it, you can't help anyone. Again, shoot that person, please, okay? Now, it helps to go through something that someone else has gone through, doesn't it? It helps, I, I would say that, but you don't have to go through what they went through in order to minister to them. My daughter didn't know anything at two or three years old, what kind of problems there were. She didn't understand that the complexities of the school and parents and kids, by the way, parents, your kids don't roll far from the tree. How many people know that too, right? Yeah, yeah. And so that's the problem, okay? But all I know is I came home from work and my daughter would put her arms around me. She'd give me a hug and say, Daddy, I love you. And you know something? That would melt my heart. And man, that made me feel like a million bucks. My daughter didn't know what was going on. She didn't understand it. But guess what? She loved me. She expressed that love to me. You see, don't tell people you don't know what I'm going through. See, you cut off every line of, of, of help that you can get from anyone when you say you don't know what I'm going through. You're telling people you can't help me. Isn't that the truth? Be careful of that. God has a purpose. We've got to learn how not to pout. Amen? God says he'll never tempt us beyond what we can bear without a way of escape. That's what he says. Now, how many people feel like the rubber band is ready to break? The rubber band is ready to break. The rubber band is ready to break. How many people feel that way? Right? But God said, guess what? I'm stretching the rubber band, but it ain't going to break. Anyone ever blown up a balloon before? How many people have ever blown up a balloon? This is an easy one. You can raise your hand, right? Yeah. Now, if you've blown up a balloon... The first few puffs are fun. But how about when you're getting to the fact there's like that much of the unblown balloon at the end, and you start going like this. Anyone know what I'm talking about right now? Right. Now, I love those guys who work with balloons, the clowns who work with balloons. They're amazing. And one time I said, let me try that. So I blew it first. I'm all like, and then I tie it off, and I'm trying to twist. I'm going like this. Why? Because I don't want it to pop. You see, God sometimes will test you to your limit, but he'll never take you over your limit. We're afraid we're going to pop. 
God knows us. He knows our frame. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. If you tap into him, understand that which tries to kill you, God will make stronger for you. Amen? That's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do through his, his grace, through his Holy Spirit. Now hear me. Some people say what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's true, but that's human strength. I'm talking about divine strength. Amen? I found one thing out. In my own humanity, I will fail. How about you? We're going to see that in a few minutes. The next thing we're going to see, not only do we need to put our mission over our emotions, not only when trials come our way, do we have to see the purpose and not pout, but the next thing we're going to see is we need to center on what God is doing through us, not what God is doing to us. Did anyone ever say that, God, why are you doing this to me? Instead of saying, God, what are you doing through me? Those are hard words for us to ask. Look, at these are not easy principles, but they're livable because you've got the power of God with you. Amen? Look what it says in verse 4. But let patience, everyone say that word, patience. Thank you, doctor. Have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. When a trial comes, he says, let patience have its work. Another word for patience is the, is the word endurance. Endurance. Now, this morning, I put on my right guard, high endurance. Amen? Because I wanted for you all to be happy today. Amen? If something has endurance, it means it lasts through difficult times. Amen? And understand that God will allow trials to come into our life because he has a purpose for us. He'll allow trials to come into our life because he has a mission for us. But also he will grow us. He'll build endurance through that. It says that we may be perfect. The word is teleos. means fully developed. Now I grow all kinds of farm plants in my house. You guys know that. I did my tomatoes this year. Man, was I mad. I got probably one of the best, best crops of plum tomatoes. I got the San Marzanas. I was going to jar them. Mm -hmm, that's right, Al. I was going to jar them, right? And I got my first four jars done, and there's like almost 200 tomatoes on the vine. I go to Boston and say, when I get back, man, it's going to be a bonanza, right? I come home. I go, ah, the deer came in my yard. All I have is bare stems going from bottom to top. Bambi, look out. You're going to be on my table this fall. I'm just telling you right now. You know, I, I, besides the tomatoes, I, I grow uh, squash, I, uh, zucchini. I have a zucchini curse on me. You may not believe in curses, but I believe in the zucchini curse. No matter where I've ever lived, I can't grow zucchini. Now, I can grow it, and I get these huge, I may have seen how huge the leaves get. And they get really rich, they get really full, Right? They get these blooms, but they never get any fruit. What a disappointing plant. <laughs> Why do I have this thing? I'm going to probably rip them out of the ground when I get home. I got one zucchini all season. See, that plant was meant to prolifically make fruit. It didn't do it. It didn't produce to its fullest. And you know something? I'm ready to get rid of it. Didn't God say we need to bear fruit? Didn't he curse the fig tree when he saw it with a bunch of leaves? It was luscious, but there was no fruit. You see, God will use us through trials and tribulations to bring the fullness of his grace out of each and every one of us that we can come to the fullness of the wholeness of what God wants for you and me. Trials will bring us there. It's difficult, though, isn't it? You see, a Christian who is unwilling to endure trials in a godly manner is just like a weightlifter or a bodybuilder who refuses to lift weights. Did you hear what I just said? A Christian who is unwilling to go through trials is like a bodybuilder who's unwilling to lift weights. We need these things in our lives. God has a prescription for us, amen? I love what Scripture says in 1 Peter 5.10. How many people remember Peter, Jesus said to him, you're going to fail me, Peter. But he says, when you come back to me, he says, Satan has desired to, to sift you like wheat. But when you come back to me, he said, strengthen my brethren. You see, Jesus was going to use that to strengthen Peter. Peter didn't understand that. But that man who was strengthened, this is what he said. After you have suffered a little while, did Peter suffer? No doubt about it. 
the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, establish you. Let me say this again. You have it up on the board. It says uh, that he himself, say it with me, will perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Will you perfect yourself? Will you strengthen yourself? No, God will do the work if we are submissive to him. He promises through his Holy Spirit to do so. But we must be willing participants in the divine plan of God in our lives. Amen? You see, instead of saying, God, what are you doing to me? We must say, God, what is it that you're trying to do through me? You know, 1 Peter 2.20, I've always loved this scripture. Uh, probably because I got in a lot of trouble when I was a kid. But it says, what is there if when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? You, you deserved it, right? But look at this. But if when you do what is right and suffer for it, if you patiently endure it, this finds favor with God. He says this. If you're suffering because you were a dope, that's your problem. But if you're suffering righteously speaking, and you are turning to God, God will bring growth into your life. Amen? He will. It's so difficult. We have to fight our, our, our human, our human, uh, you, 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 you. we got to fight ourselves. And the reason we have to fight ourselves is because when pain comes, as we said before, all of our self-defense mechanisms kick in. Amen? we got to remember that there is a mission, and do not allow our emotions to take over. we got to remember that there's a purpose, and we can't keep pouting. We have to remember that God is doing something through us, not just doing something to us. See, his purpose here, it says in Ephesians 4.13, is till we come, all come to the unity of faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, same word, fullness, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of of Christ. See, God wants for your faith to be as full as Jesus is. Think about that. Jesus is God, the Son of God. He says, I want to bring you to my fullness. That's the goal, amen? Now, how many people here are going to attain that in this lifetime? Do not raise your hand. But how many people know Jesus says you will work towards that? Amen? You see, we need to center on what God is trying to do through us not what God is doing to us. The next thing that we're going to see is this. <laughs> when trials come your way, seek to be a wise man, not a wise guy. How many people know there's a difference, huh? When things go wrong, we can all become wise guys real quick, amen? We get negative, we criticize other people, but understand, we need to be people who consider to be wise men or wise women, right? Right? Look what verse 5 says. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him, what? Ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Ask of God. Pastor Fogel said something last week that blew me away. I immediately broke all my own personal rules and went right on Facebook and I quoted it. You know what that was? He said, our problem is not unanswered prayer. Our problem is unprayed requests. Coming in the car and saying, God, please help me today. I, I, I got a sore throat. Please, amen. That's not a request made to God. Now, there are those moments when we may not have time, and I'm not criticizing that, but if all our prayers are those little quick, that's all, folks. Guess what? It's all, folks. Nothing's going to change. We need to spend time on our knees with God. We need to spend time in his word. We need to spend time with him. When Paul says that I asked Jesus three times to take that thorn in the flesh, the word there uh, that he says three times literally means three seasons of prayer. He's not just saying, God, please take it away. He didn't do it. God, please take it away. He didn't do it. He's talking about three seasons of prayer that he came to God. I encourage you in your life, practice prayer and fasting. There are times when we need to wait patiently on the Lord and we need to bring our request to him more than just a quick little prayer. Amen? You know, God's wisdom is not man's wisdom. How many people know that? If any of you, Scripture says, lacks wisdom, now none of us want to admit it, but when things go wrong, we all demonstrate it. Amen? Let him ask of God, who gives to all what? Liberally. 
and without reproach, and it will be given to him. You see, I love this. You see, because when we go through troubles, don't we question God? Don't we question ourselves? Don't we question what we should be doing? I just want to know, God. I just want to know. Should I do this or should I not? God, I just want to know. And God says, mm -mm. faith, character. And there are times when we've got to wait upon the Lord, and we need to ask him for wisdom. I was always told when you're going through a difficult time, don't make any major decisions in life. How many people have heard that? How many people you try to practice that too, right? You know, I, I've noticed over the years when, I, when I'm with people and counsel people, whatever, the people who seem to have the most problems are the ones who instinctively and quickly react to problems, and their reaction only creates a greater turmoil in their life. You hear what I'm trying to say? Happens a lot in marriages. You know, they're arguing about this, arguing about that, and the real issues are so buried because they've been lobbing bombs back and forth for years. We have to be careful to wait and say, God, give me wisdom. You see, because man's wisdom is not God's wisdom. How many people know that? In fact, you hear today, don't put up with that. Oh, there was a one over this week. God just wants you to be happy. Show it to me. Now, I think God does want us to be happy, but not at any cost. Amen? Happy is a matter of opinion. I can look at someone like Vin DeLuca, who's counting the back as a, as a faithful usher today, and I can say, Vin, that shirt is hideous. Now, notice, everyone laughed except for Vinny. Okay? You're very well, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you got <laughs> yeah. You see, in man's wisdom, all of us thought it was funny, but he didn't. Huh? You see, a lot of times in man's wisdom, man's wisdom will always lead you down the wrong path. It'll lead you down the path of selfishness and self-serving, right? Scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Amen? In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It's so difficult because we want to do it our way. Amen? Nobody talks to me that way. Right? I'm going to take care of this myself. No more Mr. Nice Guy. But hear me. When we start to think that way, we are throwing out the wisdom of God. Amen? Why? Because sometimes we wait, and we're tired of waiting. We're tired of not seeing something change. Understand, God's trying to change this. We're just trying to change all of that. Amen? You know, it says here in James, he says, but if you have bitter envy and self seeking in your heart. That's the wisdom of man. Take care of yourself. Be happy. Don't put up with that. Serve yourself. Do what's good for you. If you have self-seeking in your hearts and do not boast, uh, excuse me, and lie against the truth, the wisdom, this wisdom does not descend from above. When people say, serve yourself, do what feels good to you, you know that's not from God. And that's the message of the world today, isn't it? Is it the message of the world today? It is sensual, it's earthly, and what else does it say? What does it say up there? It's what? Demonic. Wow, I didn't say it. The Word of God did, amen? Sometimes I get demonic thinking in my head. How about you? You little devil. <laughs> yeah, we all get demonic thinking in our head sometimes, amen? See, it brings confusion into our lives the wisdom of the world, and we need to ask God to give us wisdom. He goes on to say this. A little later in the book of James, he says, you don't have because you don't ask, and you don't receive because you ask for the wrong things. I know when I'm feeling pain, all I, all I pray for is, God, take away the pain. 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 How many people know what I'm talking about? They said, oh, God, heal this. I'll tell you what, the season of life, I've, I've learned to have mercy on people who have long-term illness, long-term pain in their lives, and how they try to manage that pain. 
I think God was trying to give me mercy in that area of my life. But if all I did was say, God, take away the pain. I don't want the pain. God, you're not taking it away. Why not? I'm missing the blessing that God has for me. How about you? <laughs> he's going to go under soon. Don't worry. Yeah, the doctor's going to give Rudy propofol, and he's going to go to sleep. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Our prayers are with you, my friend. Yeah. Look what he says here. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, right? Because if he doubts, he's like the wind and the waves of the sea. In fact, I want to go back. I missed something here. Look what it says here in verse 5. It says, let him ask of God if you lack wisdom. And look what it says here. Who gives to all, what's that say? Liberally. That means he'll give you a lot of it. He'll give you a lot of it if you wait. And the next thing it says here, without what? You know what that means? He won't get mad at you for asking. How many people you're sort of afraid to ask God because I should be a mature enough Christian by now? Right? I talked to one to person one time who was having a problem, physical problem, and I said, why don't you come to the altar for it? Uh-uh, I prayed once. Yeah, God will be very upset with me if I come to him again. That's not what the word of God says. You don't have to put up a front for God. God knows our human weakness. In fact, he says the opposite. Come to me and come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. Doesn't that what he says? Understand, we need to come to him. And God will not get angry with us for coming to him in our desperation. In fact, he's pleased when we come to him. Let us ask in faith without doubting. Because he who is doubt is like the wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he'll receive anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. That means today I say I'm going to trust God, and then an hour from now I take it back. Amen? Amen. How do we prevent ourselves from doing that? Now, listen to me. The pain sometimes doesn't go away, and our human thinking comes back, but we have to remind ourselves of who we are. Scripture talks about a man who goes and looks at himself in a mirror and walks away and forgets what kind of man he is. I have to challenge myself on a daily basis. Believe me, guys, I get all kinds of feelings and emotions, and I get all those mean feelings towards other people. I told you I am Cecil B. to Matt when it comes to making movies in my head and making scripts up. Amen? He says this, I'll do that. They do this, I'll do that. No, I'll take care of them over here and I'll do that, right? But sooner or later, we've got to stop ourselves and say, wait, this is not of God. Stop it, Matt. Don't let your heart, our wicked heart, speak to us. Let you speak to your wicked heart and tell it the truth. Amen? i got to tell my heart the truth sometimes. Because my heart will lie to me. Scripture says my heart's a liar. How many people know Scripture says the heart's a liar? The heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. Who can know it? Amen? And God will test the heart. He'll purposely allow us to go in situations where he'll show us the wickedness of our heart. Don't say, no, no, I'm a good person. God may be a good person. Well, guess what? Sin made you a bad person. <laughs> right? And the sooner we realize there's wickedness in our heart, the sooner we can be blessed of God. Amen? So when we go through trials, tribulations, we ask ourselves, why me? We got to remember there's a mission for us. Don't get caught up in our emotions. We got to remember there's a purpose and we got to stop pouting. We got to center on what God is doing through us, not just what he's doing to us. We've got to be, seek to be wise men, not just wise guys. And the last thing we're going to see is when we go through difficult situations and God begins to work, brag about God, not yourself. Boast in the Lord, not yourself. I heard this a couple days ago. I'm so glad that God made me a strong person. I can endure anything. That person is in for an education I don't want to be around for. Amen? We, we've got... What you looking at? Anyway... <laughs> Look what this goes on to say here. And sometimes the, the, these scriptures are really misconstrued as to what they are. Verse 9, look at this. Let the lowly brother glory in his what? Exaltation. That means to be exalted. We'll see it in a minute. But the rich in his what? Humiliation. Because as a flower of the field, he will pass away. I skipped to verse 11. So the rich man will also fade away in his pursuits. And we're going to see a little bit about the poor and the rich later on. You see, James is not blasting the rich. It's not wrong to have money. But the question is, what are you trusting in? 
Amen? He's talking here about the lowly brother. He glories. What's a lowly brother? I, mean, I saw this for the first time. I said, well, that's pretty prideful. I'll glory in my exaltation. If I'm lowly, what am I exalted in? Nothing of myself. So what can I be exalted in? What God is doing in me. What God promised he would do in me. God took a nobody like Abraham and he made him a somebody. Amen? Understand what we as people who are lowly glory in is the exaltation of Christ in our lives. How he will lift us up. I'm not going to lift myself up. What God has done in his mercy for me. Not how good I've been. That God in his, his mercy and his kindness has, has taken me out of the situation. Not how clever I was to get out of it. You see, if I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast in the Lord. Amen? Now listen to me. Some of the greatest ideas I have ever had here at Mountaintop Church, Vin DeLuke will tell you, they were mistakes. That's funny sometimes. This is, i, I got to hear this. I guess every pastor goes through this. Someone will say, well, you know, as Pastor Matt always says, and they'll make some quote, and I'll go, I never said that. Well, take credit. Okay. <laughs> right? Be careful, because most of our best ideas tend to be mistakes. We fell into them. And if God did give you the gift of being a little bit more clever, use that cleverness humbly. Amen? Use it humbly. You see, Jesus said this in Matthew 5, 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. See, humility is the key. Amen? Humility is the key when we go through trials and tribulations. And understand, that's the last thing I want to apply. You see, because when, when I'm going through trials and tribulations, I'm trying to protect myself. I'm trying to promote myself. How many people know that? And so I'll say prideful things, and, and I'll do things and push people away and moving people in front of me. How many people ever remember Lost in Space? I love Lost in Space. Anyone? Anyone? Okay, Veronica did, Gabriel did, no one else. Okay, Joe did. Anyone, raise your hand high proudly if you watched Lost in Space when you were a kid. All right, now we're getting somewhere, all right? Now, I just want you to see this because what would happen is these, these really cheesy aliens would come towards Dr. Smith and the robot would go, morning, Will Robinson, morning, right? And then all of a sudden, Dr. Smith, oh, Jermaine, come on up here for a minute. I, I, we got to do it. We got to do it the right way. Come on, Jermaine, hurry up. Come on, come on. Come on. We're on the clock, Jermaine. Come on. This is what, well, he's a lot taller than Will Robinson was, but this is what Dr. Smith would do. He'd go, oh, no, and he'd put Will in front of him just like this, remember? Thank you, Jermaine. I have no idea why I told you that. Anyway, you see, he was always looking out for himself. See, when we're self-protecting and self-promoting, we're too busy taking care of of ourselves and it says God I don't trust you to take care of me in these last days before Jesus Christ comes again you need to hear me if we are people who are merely busy taking care of ourselves we will not be salt and light to this generation I know that's a hard one to swallow I'm not trying to come against anyone right now I know my own struggles of life but the enemy will keep you running in circles like a hamster on a wheel too busy. Can't do that. We got this. We got that. Oh, I'm just tired today. I, 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 believe it. We all have those moments. But here, when those things get in the way of serving God, understand you've allowed the enemy to make you a hamster on a wheel. Amen? We've got to be so careful. We've got to walk in humility. If we do what God calls us to do, he will take care of us. If we share what he tells us to share and love as he tells us to share, he will exonerate us. That's the kind of God that we have. I love, and we're going to close our service today with a scripture, and Dow, you can come on up. Peter wrote this, and these words, I pray, sink deep into your heart, because this is what God has done. We who are lowly exalt in the exaltation that Jesus Christ has brought to each and every one of us, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. Not because we did anything right, but because God desired to lift us up. Amen? His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He called us out of darkness into his light.
Do you walk in that light today? Who were once not a people, but now are the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. As we close out our, our morning here, maybe you've been in that same place. I've been there many times and I'll be there again. What's that place that we get in? The place where the problems around us weighed us down. We begin to question God's love for us and God's approval of us. We find ourselves pouting instead of finding purpose. We allow our emotions to overwhelm our mission in life. We're those who complain what God is doing to us instead of trying to see what he's doing through us. We become those who become wise guys instead of seeking to be wise with God's wisdom. We end up protecting ourselves and bragging about ourselves instead of boasting in the Lord. And this morning, the call is very simple from the Word of God. God wants to bring purpose to your trial. God wants to bring mission to your life. Amen? God wants to do something through you, not something to you. God wants to bring wisdom to your life to endure these trials and tribulations, not to crumble under them. Thank you.